Hey YouTube, Matt back out in the shop and unfortunately I can't show you the projects that I'm working on right now because they're all Christmas presents and it's not Christmas yet. But we've had some unseasonably warm weather here in the Northeast and I have taken advantage of that to do a little uh, rearranging in the shop. Now, those of you who are regulars will note straight away that the background is not what it usually is. And so since I can't show you the projects, at least not yet, I thought I would take this opportunity to uh, tick off the most requested thing I get from y'all, which is a shop tour. Let me start by saying I have been really, really reticent to do this because I don't consider this to be, you know, set up well as a shop at all. Even with the rearranging that I've done over the last day or two, uh, this is still... This is a garage where I managed to get a couple things done. This, this is hardly a shop. So while we're going through this, I'm gonna show you what's here, but I'm also gonna tell you what my plans are. This is a little bit of a sneak preview of what we're gonna be doing in 2016. All right, first things first, let's talk about the space. This is a pretty standard two-car garage. It happens to be detached from the house. It's a standalone structure, but it's the same size and shape as you're gonna find in any other two-bay garage that has individual doors for the two sides. The space itself is 20 feet deep by 22 feet wide, although, as you'll see in a minute, I do lose a couple of feet on this side over here because there's a set of steps that goes up to, uh, what is my office upstairs. Okay, I don't know where you're supposed to start a shop tour, so I'm just gonna start over here in this corner for lack of any better ideas. One of the things that has changed in the last couple of days is I freed up this whole wall along here to be lumber storage. It's not terribly effective lumber storage at the moment because it's just an empty wall. I still need to build a, a sheet goods and scrap card and some shelves for the longer stock and things like that. The lumber pieces and scraps that I had were just stuffed in every nook and cranny of the garage out here. Made it impossible to find anything, to know what I had, and really didn't give me any facilities to deal with larger pieces like when I get new stock. There is a nice closet here, goes underneath the steps that go to the second floor of this detached garage. There's currently really nothing shop related in there except maybe the piece of glass I use for a flat surface for sharpening. What is in here is a combination of uh, telescopes I need to sell, fishing gear that needs to go on a shelf I haven't built in the other garage, and you know, snow shovels, junk like that. I will someday get that closet cleaned out and have it available for shop use, but uh, that day is not today. Okay, moving around here, Standing up in that corner is just a stack of pipe for pipe clamps. I keep a bunch of them assembled, you'll see them over here, but I have some other pieces that I can add on to make them really long, and I also have some two, two and a half foot pieces I can make little short pipe clamps. The scrap wood bin, it actually belongs to my neighbor. And then there's this beast. This old guy was actually built by a mechanic who worked with my grandfather on the B&O Railroad. Uh, when he retired, he gave the chest to my granddad, and uh, he used it for, I don't know, 40 or 50 years or something like that in his basement before I finally inherited it. At the moment, I have it mostly full of fasteners and pieces of plumbing hardware and just assorted miscellaneous odds and ends. There's a whole bunch of files and stuff in this drawer down here. It's not the most practical thing ever, but I'm obviously sentimentally attached to it, so I want it to stay in the shop. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get it up higher, though, because especially those very bottom drawers are a long way down there. And speaking of drawers, we come to the first Craigslist item in the shop, of which there are many. Picked up this five drawer base unit for 50 bucks on Craigslist, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, something like that. This has served me well, but it is definitely on the maybe list for keeping long term. Right now I have in here what everybody has in, in stuff like this. There's uh, you know regular screwdrivers in one drawer, Phillips in another, all of my pliers and such things are, are in another drawer. Stuff is sorted out pretty well. But of course only I can find anything in here because I know what drawer the stuff is in. And even then, you know, all the different sizes of this screwdriver or that wrench or whatever just kind of flop together in the drawer. Ultimately, I could see most of what's in here uh, hanging on, you know, pegboard or some other kind of organizer on the wall where the individual pieces could be better sorted and more accessible. I hung a couple of the hand saws that I use with some regularity up on the wall just to make them more accessible and in the case of the coping saws, frankly, just to keep those fine, fine blades from getting bent and damaged, knocked around in a drawer. And likewise, I take good advantage of the fact that I've got this big heavy I-beam running front to back in the shop as a place to hang most of my longer bar clamps. 
Okay, this arrangement, this, this needs to go, frankly. Uh, this is the classic flat space that collects junk. Um, these shelves were actually built as a computer desk for my dorm room in college. That's why it's all bolted together. It, it comes apart for storage and transport. And it tells you how long ago I was in college that a computer took up this kind of room. Anyway, I keep it here behind the workbench because as a nice open set of shelves, it is a, it's a great place to set things like your drills and drivers and uh, you know the sander that goes on the bench, stuff that I grab and use pretty regularly. Also being a nice open set of shelves, it collects things like this. This was the plastic container that some really good pulled pork came in that I looked at and said, hey, look, I could put paint or something in that, right? And so now it's here. Anyway, I have visions of building some, some cubbies or cabinets or something. I haven't figured out exactly what it's going to be, um, but I want to get all my sandpaper organized into a space for sandpaper. I want all of my handheld power tools, not, not just these things, but the circ saw, the router, all of that stuff that has a cord to be together and managed somehow. But continuing with the theme of probably needs to go, we have the first of two of these work benches that I created eons ago. I, I'll bet I've had these plastic sawhorses for 20 years and uh, it's literally a scrap piece of plywood that's just sitting on them. It is reinforced with a little bit of two by four screwed down just to give it a little stiffness. But when all is said and done, this is just another one of those flat surfaces that collects junk. It happens to work out pretty well as a, as a convenient place to hold spring and F-style clamps. And it's close enough to the table saw that it's a respectable place to keep the gripper and the dado set and stuff like that. You know, but for the most part, here we go, I just, I got washers and nuts and things that belong in that tool cabinet over there that I just didn't bother to put away. A bottle of glue that is not long for this world. And underneath I have, you know, yet another portion of my handheld power tools. Uh, these are the ones that don't see the light of day very often, so I actually keep them in their plastic cases. That's the biscuit joiner, the sawzall, and a half inch chuck hand drill that I actually bought to stir drywall compound of all things. So again, long-term vision is for, you know, things like the pneumatic tools to be able to go into easy to access cubbies with the rest of the hand drills and such things. All of the clamps to go onto some sort of a clamp rack table saw goodies to get built into some sort of cabinet or drawer or something underneath the table saw. This is one of those things that I almost would have been better off if I didn't have it because then I'd have been forced to come up with a good solution instead of using this cruddy thing just because it happened to be here. Things improve a little bit over here in dust collection corner. I did a video where I talked about the separator modification that I made to my Harbor Freight dust collector. So if you haven't seen that, you can go check that out. I'm still very, very happy with, uh, with this setup, with the performance of this dust collector, and with the effectiveness of the separator mod. And I'm still incredibly unhappy with what I have not done in terms of plumbing the dust collection in here. So that's definitely on the 2016 project list. In this guy, there's actually a two-part series on the construction of my whole shop vac uh, cabinet and separator plumbing, all of that good stuff. Uh, my judgment on this thing hasn't changed either. It's a little bit on the big and bulky side, but it works so well. I would do this project again in a heartbeat. Actually, what I need to do is I need to finish this project because it's a flat space, so it collects stuff, have some Forstner bits. I never did build any of the accessory holders, so I just have all the vac parts laying around on the top of this thing. Unfortunately, this works a little too well. The stuff is really easy to get at, and I haven't lost any pieces yet. So I don't know when I'm gonna get motivated to make this better. The table saw sled with basically no home. That's another vote for do something in and around the table saw for organization. I'm guessing most of you remember this beast, my Harbor Freight 20 inch drill press. Uh, this is another one that I am really spectacularly happy with. Uh, it's way, 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 nicer, heavier duty, more precise than anything I actually needed. Um, and I managed to pick it up when I had one of those precious 25% off coupons in my hand. So I got it for a song. But how often do you need a drill press? If I'm being honest, this is the condition in which it finds itself pretty regularly. The table makes an awesome holder for the vac hose. Say it with me, guys. I need to do something about this in 2016. 
That is part of my prep for the lumber rack that will eventually be over on the other side of the shop. I had to move the top saw out from behind the workbench and this is where it landed here next to the drill press. I think this is going to work out pretty well for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that I have the ability to lower the drill press table to the same height as the top saw and give myself essentially a, you know, an extension wing out here. The other thing is that I'm starting to have a more logical flow of tools for how I'm going to run the dust collection. I've got the drill press right here, which is essentially impossible to do dust collection per se, uh, but you do need to vacuum you know, around it. This thing needs really both the high airflow from the dust collector and some sort of a shroud in the back, as well as the high static vacuum pressure from the shop vac on the dust port back here in the back. And we're, we're headed down towards the bandsaw, so I should be able to mostly just run dust collection down this wall and hit almost everything I need. I like the portability of the chop saw sitting on one of these Black & Decker workmates, and it's a surprisingly rigid arrangement. Nevertheless, I do have on my list to build a dedicated miter saw station because I want to do something a little more elegant than use the drill press uh, as in-feed and out-feed tables for this thing, and also, it takes up a lot of room, especially when you count the horizontal space necessary for stock clearance. And I have no storage anywhere around this thing. It's just taking up all of that space and, and doing nothing but being a chop saw. Well, and if you liked the first cruddy plywood and plastic sawhorse bench, you'll love this one. Actually, this one makes a little bit more sense. This is my metalworking area. I have the welder and the grinder and uh, the angle grinders and just all the stuff associated with cutting and fastening and working with metal all in this one spot. And there's a good reason to do that. Metal is messy really, really messy. Uh, this plywood gets destroyed about annually. It has to be replaced. It's a pretty good idea to keep your metal working area, if you have one, as separate as you can from your woodworking area. And in fact, this is probably going to move. Um, as I continue down the wall over here with the woodworking machines, and you can see we're getting to the bandsaw over here, um, this has gone from being in a nice out of the way corner to being kind of in the middle of the road so far as woodworking goes. Having said that, I have a couple more metalworking projects in mind and I always run into the need to do, you know, little things here and there with metal even when I'm doing mostly wood projects. So I don't want to break this down. I want to leave the metalworking spot, you know, together, ready to go, ready to, ready to work when I do need it. But honestly, the only thing that's keeping me from moving this to the other side of the garage right now is the welder and the need for the 30 amp socket that is buried over in the corner over there. I'm going to have to bust up some drywall and do some pretty serious electrical work in order to get an equivalent outlet clear on the other side of the garage. So it's on the to-do list, but it's another who knows when. And then finally, coming around this direction, we have ye old bandsaw. Actually, it's not ye old, it's brand new. This is a lousy place for this bandsaw. It's here only because I don't have 220 wired up in the shop yet. I have it available, but I don't have it wired up anywhere. So the bandsaw is currently set up for 110, which means it needs that same big outlet that the welder is plugged into. For now, it stays here, uh, which means the only dust collection hose I have that's long enough to reach it is actually from the shop vac and not the dust collector. I have an adapter on here to, to bring this down to the right size. The whole thing Thing is just totally suboptimal. I, I need to get this bandsaw closer to where I'm doing my work, closer to the dust collector so I can hook it up to the right tool and not with 20 feet of hose. And I would like it to be sort of permanently further away from the metalworking area. A as it is right now, it's on a mobile base, so it's not too bad, but I do have to, you know, raise up the leveling feet and roll the thing out of the way if I want to do any welding. But I continue to love the bandsaw itself. In fact, uh, somewhere on or around Christmas Day, there'll be a video coming out where you'll see a, a sort of a creative use of the bandsaw itself. Okay, well, the final little uh, dark corner of the garage here, this is the, the other garage door. So we've gone you know, across the front of the garage from where the bandsaw is. Um, the entrance door to this place is right here behind me. And uh, obviously there's a tractor sitting here. The tractor's a kind of an interesting beast. Uh, it's not really a problem to, to back it out, get it out of here, and frankly, to let it sit outside for a couple of days if I'm really into a project. But for the most part, I like keeping it out of the elements. And so I don't mind the fact that it 
puts me in a position of needing to keep things in the shop relatively mobile and flexible to accommodate its coming and going. And the only things of consequence back here are the air compressor, which obviously is needed to drive all of the pneumatic tools. Uh, and I do have one of my available extension cords on a reel is, is stuffed back here in the corner. This whole thing was originally put together uh, to be used you know, out in the driveway. So it's not really in the most convenient place in terms of using it in the rest of the shop. Uh, but it does keep the air compressor, which is noisy, and I don't really want it ingesting dust, you know, kind of away from everything else that's going on. So it's not all bad. If I ever get up the motivation to do the necessary electrical work, I think this is where the metal working area is going to go. It's always going to be somewhat disconnected from the rest of the shop just because of the tractor and the entrance door. So I think this is going to be a good place to put the stuff that really needs to be off by itself. This is your standard late 90s, early 2000s model Craftsman table saw. It was another Craigslist find. I paid all of $60 for this table saw, which is pretty amazing when you consider the junk that's out there. It's pretty far from being the, the greatest table saw ever. Uh, it's a little underpowered to start with. It's only a one horse motor. On the upside, that means it runs easily off the 110 that I have readily available. And this fence, I don't wanna say it's useless, it's pretty close to useless. Um, it doesn't track real well. You pretty much have to measure front and back with the tape every time you want to set this thing to make sure that when you lock it down that it's actually square. I'll give it a couple of bonus points. The aluminum extrusion on here is pretty, pretty straight. It's only off by maybe four or five thou across the length of it. And once you get it locked, it does stay in place relatively firmly. I only have 24 inch cut capacity over here to the right of the blade, so I end up busting my sheet goods down into smaller pieces, usually just on the floor with a handheld circ saw. And last but certainly not least, we have the heart of the workshop, as it were. This is the Harbor Freight Special, the five foot hardwood bench. I tell you, the bench is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, for the most part, I've been pretty happy with it, certainly for the price. You know, again, if you hold out for the 20% off coupon and wait for it to go on sale, you're, you're only gonna be in for about $120, $125, something like that for this bench. And what has surprised me about it more than anything is its overall durability. I have beaten on this thing, I have done hand sawing, I have you know, done all sorts of glue ups and whatever on the top, and it has remained relatively flat and the surface has remained you know, relatively intact. It's certainly no more scuffed up than any other workbench would be. And as you can see, I make good use of the shelf that's down here. This is the primary storage for the handheld power tools that I use with any regularity. But at the same time, while I do feel that this bench is a pretty good value and that it's worked out reasonably well for me, it's also one of the first things that I wanna change about the shop. For starters, this bench is just too small. The five foot length is pretty good, but it's too short. It needs to be about two, two and a half inches taller to be at the same height as the table saw, which is better working height and would let it serve as a decent outfeed table. It's also too narrow. It's only 20 inches front to back, and I find myself pushing things off the edge pretty routinely. I think when I replace this, I'm gonna go 30, maybe even three feet wide front to back. Okay, the next thing is that shelf down there. While it's working reasonably well, and I'm amazed it, it hasn't sagged or anything with all the weight I've put on it, it's completely open. All of the dust and dirt and glue and everything else that uh, falls off the bench falls onto that shelf. It's just not a good place to keep those tools. Third is this vise. This is a piece of crap. Say what you will about the quality of the rest of the bench and how well it's held up. I haven't liked that vice from day one. And it's the only vice on this bench. And quite frankly, a tail vice is, um, is not that useful most of the time. The general weight and sturdiness of the bench is, uh, is okay for most things. When you get into hand planing or hand sawing, you do notice it moving around a little bit though. So I would like for a new bench to be just generally stiffer and heavier and more solid. So there's the nickel tour and a little sneak preview of stuff that uh, you guys can hold me accountable for getting done in 2016. You can expect the next project video uh, on or about Christmas once I'm sure that the project is safely in the hands of the recipient. Till then, you could give me a Christmas present, hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. And since I'm not sure exactly when I'm gonna see you next, I'm gonna wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and above all, stay safe, YouTube.